This is Ted King. He rides with Liquid Gas Cannondale, and he's um, nice enough to join us today. Um, Good afternoon. Yeah, there you go. Where are you joining us from? I am hanging out in scenic Palo Alto right now. Um, I've been up in Napa for a week, hanging out with some friends. You know, November kicks off, and it's a good time to escape New England because we have various Superstorm Sandy's going on, followed up by a, uh, a nor'easter, which actually isn't that bad if you're a tried and true New Englander. But if you're trying to ride a bike, then it kind of sucks. So, um, yeah, I mean, early November it's a good time to come west, and I'm just soaking up the good weather and putting some big hours on the bike again. Well, how do you feel about your team this year? I see you for right now. You have eight guys leaving and nine guys coming. Is that normal? No. I mean, I'd, I'd say not. It's not a normal situation, but, I mean, there's a lot of things that are coming down the line going in 2013. You know, I mean, Cannondale stepped up. They're going to be the, they're taking over the chief title sponsor role of the team, which is phenomenal. I mean, as an American, um, you know, I've been sharing the title with, uh, with my teammate and really good friend Timmy Duggan this year as the two Americans and uh, going into 2013 it's looking that I'm the sole American face of the team so I mean yeah from a sponsorship standpoint things are going to be changing a lot the, the management will still remain the same um, but that in addition to the roster changes yeah there's a lot of sort of cool stuff coming down the line um, I mean I call this the, the two months of Christmas you know there's a lot of there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of anticipation, there's a lot of uh, excitement, and then, you know, come January 1st, all this stuff is going to be revealed to the, to the cycling masses. Well, let me ask you a question. Being the only American, what, how do you adapt to that? Is it a hard adaptation to just different culture, different languages? Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not overnight, you know, it's not going from a... Um, a Garmin to a BMC, where English is the spoken language, and primarily it's a you know predominantly American team. Um, I mean, I went from Cervelo Test Team, which was very international team. We had 15 nationalities among 25 riders, and now I'm on uh, Liquid Gas Cannondale, and that's a team of 29 riders. I want to say we have about 24, 23, 24 Italians. Um, so yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you're you're studying the language pretty incessantly. Um, I'd say I got up to a good peak and I plateaued. I, uh, I mean, I can always say what I need to say. I understand what's being said in meetings. I understand what's being said at the dinner table. Um, so yeah, I mean, language, the culture is certainly different. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's part of the adventure, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm living overseas, racing my bike. It's an adventure unto itself. So why not step it up another level and do it in the Italian way? <laughs> Um, being a pro bike rider, what are the biggest like habits you have to kick? Habits to kick? Yeah, like like I mean, I obviously you don't live a life that like I work. live. What do you have to do differently? I mean, you have to like, like you. I mean, you have to kick any habits. You just have to eat less. You have to. I mean, what is the structure? Train more, eat less. <laughs> um, um. Yeah, that and smoking. <laughs> I'd say that jokingly. Um, I don't know. I don't think about habits that I had to give up. Well, that's good. How would you describe yourself as a pro bike rider? I am a jack of all trades. I can, and I mean, so I'm, I'm in climbing races. I'm in one day races. I'm in stage races. Um, and it's cool. I mean, it's that sort of suited me well. I, when I when I arrived to Europe, I, I mean, that was the role that I had. Uh, or that's how I sort of cut my teeth racing in America. I was just doing everything really well. I wasn't, I wasn't a Tyler Farrar. I wasn't one of these phenomenal sprinters. I wasn't uh, Tyler Finney, who's obviously an exceptional time trialist. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's suited me well. I get to do all the races. Um, I mean, I'm not. I, I recognize I'm certainly not a team leader, but you know, when you're bracing the likes of Peter Sagan and also Nibley. It's uh, it's rewarding to come away with victories if, after doing four hours of hard work beforehand. Tell me about when your team's holding a, a jersey in a big Grand Tour. How does the tone change on the team or in the bus? Um, I 
I don't know. I mean, when you have the likes of these riders, of the Nibelis, of the Sagans, I mean, nothing's ever understood. Nothing's ever prematurely, prematurely assumed that you're going to have a jersey. Um, so, I mean, and it's also a team like ours, we don't want to race to have a jersey for three days. You don't have a jersey for, for a week of a, of a three-week stage race. Um, so... I mean, to a degree, it's on. You're on the defensive when you have these guys. It's sort of nice because they are a, they are offensive type riders. So I don't know. Um, it changes a little bit, but I mean, you're you're still you're looking at the end result. You don't want to be content with the the means. You want to be content with the end. That's good. Good information. Do you think maybe? Is, is it is it a goal every year to be on the long roster to ride the Tour de France, a rider of your caliber? Um, yes. I mean, for me, yes. And uh, especially going into this year, I mean, like the current year, 2012, I was uh, basically a week away from the Tour. When I got the call that said, you're no longer on the Tour. And, I mean, coming now to the end of November... This is when you have the initial team meetings, you have the initial rosters, uh, roster meetings, and figure out where you're going to be throughout the season. And obviously, rosters are dynamic. I mean, if somebody's ill or broken bone or this, that, the other, I mean, rosters change. But, you know, I basically went 30 weeks hoping and expecting to do the tour, and then at the last minute, no. So. It just happens like that. Yeah. I mean, at the very end, you know, there's probably 11 guys for nine spots. And then it's, like I said, it's who's fit, who's super healthy, who's injured, who's this, that, or the other. Um, and often you can have, you know, two people with the exact same uh, circumstance. You know, they're both healthy, but maybe they want to take this guy over that guy for, for political reasons or this, that, or the other. So, I mean, to answer your question, like, yeah, for me, that's what I want to do. Like, 2013, I want to do the tour. Um, it's not always the case, especially on, you know, uh, Italian themed team like Clicker Gas Canada because uh, there's plenty of Italians who want to go do the Giro, you know, and that's right. their that's their bread and butter. Um, so, by and large, yeah, I mean, people want to do Grand Tours, they want to do the major Grand Tours. So, that's good. Will we see you? Do you think we'll see you in the Tour of California this year? Um, that is a probably a safe bet as your sole American. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we had. Obviously, some huge success there last year. Um, it was funny talking to Voight, and Voight. He's like, hey, Ted, uh, I think you've had your nose in the front more than anyone in this entire race. He's like, yes, that's astute. I think I have. Um, you know, I'm doing the first four hours, five hours, and then the camera comes on for the last five minutes and you watch Peter win. But I'm out there. I'm paying my dues. Absolutely. What kind of a boost is it mentally or physically when you do make it through a uh, a grand tour? Um, yeah, I mean, I've done two Giros. Uh, coming into the end, you're just you're sort of operating on fumes. Um, but yeah, I mean, once you're once you're a day in, you might as well be a weekend. You might as well be two weeks in. You want to finish the race, obviously. Um, and you want to contribute. You want to be there. So it certainly helps to be racing for, uh, I mean, for some results. Like when I was with Cervelo, you know, we had Sastra, who was third. Um, we won five stages in my first Euro. That was that was kind of massive. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one day after the next. You can never really get ahead of yourself. So, sure, I mean, you're one day into the race. You want to be looking at the end, but... Yeah, right. Pay attention to the second day. Right. Who are you tightest with on the team? <clears throat> Timmy Duggan, man. No doubt about it. So what kind of loss is that going to be? Um, heartbreaking might be a stretch, but whatever the twin of heartbreaking is. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, he and I, we were well acquainted coming into the uh, two years ago when we became teammates. Um and then over the past two years, I mean, just certainly as a product of circumstance, I mean, just being together as much as we were, um, we hung out and just, we completely meshed. I mean, we had the same sense of humor, the same uh, eating habits, riding habits. It was just, I mean, he is, in a way, he's, a, he's like a brother. So, yeah, I mean, you look at our national championships, both 
obviously this year especially and, and two years ago. Um, I mean, we're just, we're really good friends. And that, I mean, that obviously will never change. So, you know, over the course of the year, like maybe come tour Colorado time, USA Pro Cycling Challenge, I'll head out and go train with him in Colorado. Um, the European cycling circuit is relatively small, so I'll end up seeing him here and there. Um, so, I don't know. That's the long-winded way of saying it'll be heartbreaking. Well, that's good, man. It's always good to have brothers. Um, just a quick... Um, you've obviously had some setbacks in your career, and if you if you can remember any, just for the younger guys that are trying to make it to your level, how do you teach them to fight through those setbacks and get to a level of writing like yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, setback is a, I've had setbacks of the broken bone variety. Right. Uh, those, you know, they, they're sort of a, Part of the trade. I mean, if you can get to the world tour level and you've never broken a bone, hats off to you. Um, and it's not a matter of your bike handling skill or this or that. I mean, it's just there's not much protection among mid your bicycle helmet and the spandex. So, I mean, <laughs> obviously, patience is a huge part of it. Um, being able to look look to the future, but still, I mean, like, it's like looking at Grand Tour, you still got to take it day by day once you're, once you begin the, like, a healing process to, to fix a broken collarbone, um, but, I don't know, I mean, it's, in, to a degree, it's also character building, like, I mean, by no means do you ever want to break a bone, but it's, uh, it is just part of the trade, and you got to sort of suck it up and grit through it. Right, well, that's good. Well, I thank you for joining us today on Cycling Illustrated. Is there anything else you want to jo anything else you want to add? Um, I don't know when this is going to be published, but obviously a happy Thanksgiving to our American crowd out there. I'm looking forward to that. Always a nice, uh, nice last hurrah before shipping over to Europe end of November. Excellent. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you.